Okay, I guess push right back, Charlie. Oh, 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 Apologies about that, people. Nothing's wrong with you lot's computer. I don't know why, but the mic decided to turn off and my computer froze. I don't know if you lot saw me doing one minute. I apologise. Mistakes happen. Things happen. We get it going, people. You're hearing the golden voice. Everything is fine. People deluded. I'm back again. Let's just pretend the last 30 seconds never happened. As usual, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And of course, in some cases, good night to my long-term supporters. Appreciative of you lot being tuned in. If you're new here, so hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bells. Don't forget to hit the like button as we continue our journey to 70 odd thousand subscribers. We're going to go over the tabloids and all of that jazz. Any talking points, etc. I feel no sort of way about getting them in. I know, I know, I know, I know. Light work, it's light work. We're back now, we're back now, we're back now, we're back now. Thanks, Ian. DG was talking to Mikel. We know you're getting your talking points. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Apologies for such. Big up, Graham. Morning, DG. I always feel like it's deja vu with Arsenal, the January transfer window. Shout out to yourself, Graham. I don't think you're alone, my guy. We all know that if we probably weren't going to get this striker, this winger, you know, for me, again, Graham, you always hear you're part of the furniture. So I'm pretty sure you've heard me say on numerous times, I would like a central midfielder or two. And I'd like midfield just generally to be addressed because... I think we've got decent defensive options. I think we've got decent attacking options. Obviously, improvements can be made. The majority of the question marks are in the engine room. And I don't think there's a bunch of other things, but Arsenal are not going to get to the level I want, and I'm sure a lot of fans want, until we look in our midfield and have a wealth of options. You've got Declan Rice, you've got another number six, you've got two eights, and then the Havarts, the Fabio Vieiras, the Smith Rolls, the Odegaards, they can all play in eights and tens and do what they want to do. I did think in relation to the FFP and we hear we're broke and we ain't got money and I didn't think we're getting awesome and Tony, Zuba, Mendy, Louise. I did think at least one would walk in the door, man. I thought we might utilize, utilize the loan market. We've seen it with Odegaard. We've seen it with Taddy Ceballos. We've seen it with Kid Galstrog. We've seen it with Dennis Suarez. Obviously, mixed success. We want more Martin Odegaards and less of the others. I did think at least a defensive body would come in. I personally think we're playing a very dangerous game defensively. God forbid if anything happens to Benjamin White, Gabriel or Saliba, even Zinchenko who's nursing a calf injury, we're F. I know there's some rumours of we're going to go over all of this of Timber being back fit or, or fit ahead of schedule. I'm no physio and I would love to wake up. Uh, Timber is fit enough to play. But as we know, an ACL injury is a difficult one. And nine times out of 10, when you, again, I'm not a physio, but when you look at these ACL injuries, en route to the, re the rehab or the recovery, they're known to pick up little knocks. And obviously, 
at the point of Timber being signed off as medically fit to regain training and things, I don't even know if he's taking part in full training, but to, to begin, like he's signed off over his injuries, that doesn't mean a man's necessarily fit. That doesn't mean he, we don't know how many minutes he's able to play or not. And we have to allow him to physically get to his best, mentally get to his best and get back to sharpness, man. I, I do have sympathy for the football club where Timber's concerned. I don't have sympathy generally with injuries. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Tommy Asu, who's obviously over there with Japan. We all love Thomas Partey, but we've seen this move before we've seen you know the, the whole stuff around Arsenal and depth really and truly um and injuries are not just exclusive to Arsenal we ain't getting no one I think the club is more than happy with our position they're happy just being a top four club I do think that internally they want to win the Prem but I don't think they're on it like us if that makes sense I think they'll say you know what last year we finished second this year we can finish second or third next year we might go again I'm not saying that's right but and I, again, I don't know what the club are doing or not doing. Smash the like button, people. I don't know what they've tried or not tried. But it does feel whenever we have an opportunity like to really make a statement or aggressively pursue our goals, it's like we buckle, if I'm honest with you. Now, again, if everybody's fit, we've got a decent squad. But when is everybody fit? We've played, what, 20, what, 19, 20, 21 Premier League games. With numerous players are injured. Some, obviously, are probably carrying knocks. There's a lot of football to be played and decided. And where Arsenal are concerned, of course, as long as you're still in the race for the Premier League and the Champions League, you have a chance. Me, personally, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying I'm throwing in the towel. I don't think the, the, the Premier League is heading to North London. I want to be wrong. If I'm very pessimistic about our chances of the Premier League, you lot are smart enough to consider my thoughts on the Champions League. But anything can happen. You can make your own luck in life. We never go heavy and capitalise mid-season. Mid-season, when half the season is done well, starts like this are never guaranteed. That's what's disappointed me about Arsenal. Big up, DJ, just tuning in. What's the transfer issue? Come at the right time. Just cool, man. Just cool. The rage just started, man. Just cool, man. The galley could be in a set. Relax, man. We're going to get into all of that. Defence and midfield could be improved. Um, amen. As I said, for me... Striker would make me really happy if we if we woke up and we got Ivan Tony, Vlahovic, Osim and Sesko, whatever you lot desire. I think we'd go up another gear if we had a striker because we'd have more quality and depth. And as you know, game to game, there's different heroes and protagonists. And definitely in the last period, which I don't want to say we've come out of, but we've battered Crystal Palace. Hopefully we go on a run now. I think it highlighted if we had another winger. Like, let's say Pedro Neto. When you think of Pedro Neto, that's been linked with Arsenal, where you look at it, Mikel Arteta... And the club are clearly earmarking a, a, a winger. Obviously, we've got Trossard, big him up. And I'm not saying he's slow, but would you... I wouldn't describe uh, Trossard as, as an explosive winger. Where you look at Mudrup, potentially Rafinha, Pedro Neto, we've tried to get these guys and it hasn't worked out. Where you look at this last period where Martinelli and Saka have been struggling, I, and actually Trossard and Jesus and all the attackers, I just wonder if we had a Pedro Neto who probably would provide competition for Saka on the right-hand side, early, start, early doors of the season played on the left, how much could we have saved Saka and Martinelli mentally? And as much as I think the club like Nelson and Arteta likes Nelson, what he's got 87 Premier League minutes. And as I said, we played 19, 20, 21 games. You're not trusted like that. So I would love a striker, I would love a winger. For me, if anything, the spine of the club has to be addressed. We're at central midfield. Anything happens to Declan Rice, we're in trouble. Um, obviously, Partey, we've been discussing that. Jorginho, I think he's a good player, but there's certain conditions for you. El Nene, again, if we're trying to be a serious club, respectfully, El Nene, you probably a long way past your sell-by date. But I won't lie, if we could only bring in one, as I said, winger, striker, centre mid, I want that. I do think we'd need a defensive body. I, I, I think we're playing a very dangerous game, man. I hope to be wrong, though, man. Big up yourself, Chucks, as well. Big up yourself, 2-3. Neto or Elise? Ooh, some questions shouldn't be asked, man. They're both ballers, man. They're both wavy. Um, It all depends what you want, my guy. It all depends what you want. Like, it all really and truly depends what you want. Because with Elise, you could play in the 10, you can play on the left, you can play on the right, you're English, you're homegrown, you're London lad. I like you as a footballer, IC3 and that as well, Bias. Uh, but Pedro Neto, Ars well, I've done videos on you in your days at Braga. Arsenal have historically gone after you. I think you, you you fit into our remit with resale value and able to help us in the short, medium and long term. You're able to play on the left and the right. Hmm. Neto. I, I, I want to say Elise, but I think based on Pedro Neto's skill set, I think that's more needed than necessarily Elise at this moment in time. Crazy to think this window's been really quiet in general, but boy, Newcastle selling two of their names, FFP taking itself seriously. Well, to be fair, you know, 
it's money laundering, isn't it? They're selling to themselves, you know. Lo and behold, Newcastle are struggling with FFP red tape and half of they're just flogging their garbage, really and truly, respectfully to their players to Saudi. I won't lie. I would like to see Arsenal do that because I see some players get Saudi moves. And to be honest, I don't know how long the Saudi thing is going to last because it looks like some people are already navigating their way out of that. It'd be nice to flog some people over there. Neto and Elise's injuries do worry me 100%. You know, Neto's had two big injuries. Elise seems to pick up a lot of knocks. As, as Ben has said here, Neto for directness, but Elise is wavy. There you have it. Like, Elise is my more kind of footballer. Like, I think he, he plays football more how, like, it looks more aesthetically pleasing, but... I, again, I, Neto's just a savage. Like, he's not a traditional winger because I think they're dead nowadays. I don't think the top... Like, you look at Mohamed Salah. If Mohamed Salah was... And I say him because I think if you listen to how Alexis Sanchez spoke about Wenger teaching him certain things and actually Salah, when he got to Liverpool, Klopp saying, yeah, it's great you being out wide, but you need to be closer to the goal if you want to bag. The days are gone at, of top clubs having wingers. It's more inside forwards, you know. Saka, Saka and Martinelli, ironically, they're hugging the touchline too much this season. That's probably why they're not scoring. Martinelli, I mean, Salah, sorry, inside forward. Son, inside forward. You know, it, it's, it's that half space. And if there are wingers out there, there's probably one exception to the rule. But them, two, them true wingers who are getting chalk on their boots and things, they're not really getting the numbers in this day and age, if I'm honest with you. Marcel, appreciate you. I already know you're talking some garbage, but you said February the 4th will be the dagger in Arsenal's title race. Write it down, DG. Well, I shut up, man. We're not in the title race. You've got Big Bad Liverpool, who have got the least defeats in the league. You've got Manchester City. We're not in it. You lot must win the league. You must win it. Elise is overrated. Honestly, I don't see it. Eze is the only baller at Palace. I disagree. I'd rather Elise over Eze. Um, overrated is harsh, man. Hard, very, very harsh to call him overrated. In my opinion, the fullbacks are turning into wingers and the strikers are turning into tens. Football's a weird game because strikers are dropping into central midfield, wingers are in the half spaces, and there's a big, big emphasis on fullbacks, really and truly. And then the game's gone mad because it's all about obviously, I'm not knocking scoring goals and things, but it's like if you score a goal, it doesn't necessarily mean you had a good game. Many people don't watch football, it's just online agendas and so for so for score ratings and footballers are more athletes now which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but it's less about the football and more about the running. Football is in a weird, weird space, in my humble opinion, man. I appreciate how the club have stabilised in the last couple of seasons. However, we need to start acting like an elite club, get rid of squad players in the summer that aren't adding anything. And I hear that and I agree with it. I know we can't do everything we want to see at every given time, but yeah, we need to get into that stage now, in my opinion, of maximising our resources on the training ground and getting the best out of our players. Um Pardon me, we have to stop making things harder for ourselves, like shooting ourselves in the foot, as you've seen this season. We need to really plug the gaps. And I would say we need to be a bit nastier. I do think we've got a bit more fight and grit and a refusal to be bullied. But now it's about being vill villains. You look at Liverpool when they turn it on. You look at City historically, Chelsea historically, Arsenal historically, any team that Real Madrid, anyone that's won something, they've got that healthy nastiness about them. And it's unfortunately in life, Nice guys finish last. You know, we're not here to make friends. I love the fact that there's a family orientation around the club and stuff. But this is a high pressure sports environment, high testosterone. And at the end of the day, whether these players are in their late 30s or in their, uh, in the, you know, early 20s, teenagers, they're going to snap their hands and their career's done, you know. And I'm not saying you need to necessarily win things, but that's what you're in this competition to do, really. So, yeah. Why are you ducking expectations? No, I'm not ducking nothing. Listen, if we just need to do what we're doing, isn't it? Really, really and truly. Big up Declan Rice. He walks into Liverpool's team. Don't try to style us. Don't act like Trent Alexander-Arnold ain't twerking for Arsenal. He sat there and said one player would like to play with is Thierry Henry. He definitely shatter his assist record. Low it. Liverpool got to win the league in the treble. Yeah, but we're out the limelight. Them man do their thing. Arsenal's finished. We're overrated. We don't play good football. There's question marks over the manager. You lot go win the league title. Let us just... Maneuver in silence, man. In my opinion, Saka and Martinelli are the next Ribery and Robin. Just need to, that number nine to be complete. Charles, big arc there, mate. Big arc. Happy birthday to Robin. Yeah, nice options. And unfortunately, with Nelson and other fringe players, they typically only get in the lineup with other fringe players who won't best help showcase their skills with our first eleven. And obviously, I'm not saying Mikel Arteta don't trust these players, but like you don't trust them in it. So you might as well. I know we can't sell all the homegrown boys. But you might as well shot them, if I'm honest with you, and bring in players you can't. We're going for the quad. OK, that's cool. We've got our evidence. Um, let me first and foremost save this screenshot. Get the snipping tool. Marcel on the 23rd of January, 2024, at quarter to 12. He said they're going for the quad. We'll put that into the archives. Thank you. Nice work. Nice work. Nice work. Nice work. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's get into this stuff. Now, I'm sure everybody was scared when Declan, big Gabriel as well, but when Declan Rice came off, I can't speak for everybody. I was definitely shook. Apparently, Declan Rice is a tough as old boots, tougher than he looks. Declan Rice expected to be available for Arsenal's next match against Nottingham Forest after he limped off with a hamstring issue in the 5-0 win over Crystal Palace. Hopefully, he's able to take it easy. Crystal, uh, Crystal Palace was a difficult game. Nottingham Forest is going to be very difficult under the lights away from home. Feels like the last couple of times we've rocked up there it hasn't been happy for us Arsenal fans. I'm sure we lost there last year. We've definitely lost to them a couple of times in the FA Cup as well. As you know, we came off in the 73rd minute, people. Um, Arteta kind of played down rumours of him being injured. But for what it's worth, this article has said, early indications were that Rice was suffering from muscle tightness and there is now growing confidence their key midfielder has not suffered any damage. As I said, we're not playing until next Tuesday. There is further positive news with long-term absentee Timber making pleasing progress towards his long-awaited return to full training, which is good. The Netherlands international unfortunately suffered an ACL injury during the opening day of the season versus Nottingham Forest. Timber is moving closer towards a return to the main group for training at their London Coley HQ and mid-hope he can play in the defining weeks of the season. There are still obstacles to overcome before Arsenal can put a time scale on the final phase of Timber's recovery, but there is hope he can play in the final two months of the season. I mean, Timber's long-awaited return will ease the club's defensive concerns heading into the final months of the season. I mean, Arsenal don't have much to play for beyond the obvious, but final two months of the season, bro, everything could be won or lost, <laughs> literally, by this time next month, really and truly. Like, as Marcel said, you've got Liverpool, you've got the two games against Porto, obviously you've got Nottingham Forest. I don't know about that. Like, let Timber cool off and return. Bring someone in, man. Like, we, we love playing this, this game. Apparently, Partey is back in training, which allegedly has been common knowledge. But is there a coincidence with, unfortunately, Ghana going out of AFCON? And obviously, now this news coming out, I'm not too sure. And I must, I can't lie, man. I, there's so many elements about AFCON I wish was in the Premier League. Like, when you're seeing the way the media are acting after the game, like, they're pressuring the players to come out and speak. Imagine you had that in the Premier League. Imagine that was around Chelsea. I did cover this yesterday, people. Big up to you lot who have looked at my video that came out about 9.15 yesterday. Um, we've been linked with a central midfielder. I've only seen this guy on YouTube. He looks all right. Informed opinions. You're going to have to go to them ITKs. But from the fact that he's South American... It's enough for me, isn't it? But apparently Arsenal are keen on signing Boca Juniors midfielder Ezekiel Fernandez, who was linked with Liverpool a few months ago. A report from El Crack Deportivo what a publication, claims that Arsenal are keeping close tabs on the 21-year-old defensive midfielder and they recently sent scouts to watch the player in action for his country. European clubs like Inter Milan and Sevilla are keen on the player as well and it remains to be seen whether the Gunners can win the race for his signature. Reportedly, he has he's valued at €15 million, Euros, two, uh, £12.8 million, pounds, and Arsenal certainly have the final muscle to get the deal done. If we're broke, it don't matter what it is. Have we got that? The 21-year-old defensive midfielder could provide, could prove to be long-term, a quality long-term acquisition for the North London club. Arsenal will have to find a quality replacement for Partey and Fernandez fits the profile. The opportunity to join a top Premier League team will be an attractive proposition for the young midfielder as well. I mean, everybody's interested in everyone. Everybody's linked with everyone. We'll have to see exactly what's going on, man. We're going to Wembley for our first trophy this season. What you, man, winning this season? Are we forgetting in August the first trophy that's available very much at Wembley? We won it, mate. English Super Cup, please. Calm down, mate. Relax. Relax. Apparently, speaking of Liverpool, Liverpool and Arsenal are reportedly keen on Camavinga. Now, I think every Arsenal fan and Liverpool fan and any football fan would love Camavinga. What reason do you have to leave Real Madrid? What reason do Real Madrid have to sell you? It makes zero to no sense, people. So, I mean, I appreciate them lying to us. We love Camavinga, historical French ties and whatnot, but... You'd have to be crazy. Real Madrid are a prestigious club. It's the pinnacle of football. They've got Jude Bellingham. They've got him. They've got Chua Meni. They've got Vinicius, Rodrigo. Probably going to end up with ha uh, Haaland and or Mbappe one day. Yeah, man. I mean, it would be lovely, but come on. The dream is free. The hustle is sold separately. Again, don't know if these lot online know what they're talking about. I'm not saying they are or aren't telling the truth. Allegedly, Mikel Arteta completed his formalities of his new contract today. So you'd imagine the club, you, you know, realistically, Arteta probably is going to get a new deal contracted until 2025, highly regarded as a next upcoming coach. You'd imagine that this has probably been decided already and they're just waiting for the time to announce it. I don't know. 
We've been linked with a lad at Poor Old People. Um, Elva Nilsson, apparently we're looking at him to play up front. He's going to cost a hell of a lot of money, people. Apparently, he's got 16 goals in 23 matches. He only got 10 last season in the whole term. So there's been an uptake in performance. Obviously, Arsenal are looking for strikers, so it's quite easy to link us with anyone. But apparently, the individual has impressed Paolo Javier, who is Arsenal's new scout who focuses on South American players. Maybe that's where the links of the two players we've just covered recently have come from. And has seen the North London club prepare pair and move for him. It's claimed that Arsenal are even willing to spend a huge 75 million euros in brackets, 64 million to prize the inform attacker away from Portugal. Where is that money coming from? Allegedly, Ivan Tony could be available for 80 million this summer, which considering he'd have 12 months on his deal, that would be a, not only a tidy profit for Brentford, but a good little deal. I don't know if I believe that. I'll leave that with you. In relation to Zuba Mendy, these rumours have been ramping up. Uh, we know he's unlikely to join us this month, allegedly. Apparently, Sociedad would be open to selling the Spanish international who has a £53 million release clause. Meanwhile, Arsenal have a good relationship with Sociedad after we loaned them Kieran Tierney. And after our investment of over £200 million in the summer, and we know there's an IOU of £27 million to make David Raya's move from Brentford to Arsenal permanent. Where is this money going to come from? I'm not an accountant, but you get a shout out my guy Zims as well. Make sure you're following him if you're on Twitter. Which, god damn this guy's getting another contract at this point edu might get reprimanded for traffic rather than ffp man's bringing in enough duds for brazil not gonna lie if i if we i think you mean if we get the porto striker or tony i would get tony at just at this point just get anyone who's gonna score goals man i just want someone who lives breathes and scores goals but i want a savage man and to be honest with you we need to start like Getting these smart little signings, like look at Liverpool with Luis Diaz, getting these smart little signings, really. And I know Doku isn't anything to scream and shout about, but, you know, Doku would have been lit in our squad. We need to get these smart acquisitions, which he's not. Uh, Thomas Tuchel has played down reports of the lit leaving in January. Again, we know that's the case. Uh, give me sports. Dean Jones has been speaking about Ivan Tony and Arsenal versus Chelsea for him. He said... The most probable outcome is that it is the summer window in which he moves. I genuinely do believe he likes the idea of moving to Arsenal. I think that reading between the lines, we can easily see that he's open-minded about it. But if he was actually going to make a move, I can't believe for one second that Chelsea wouldn't be tabling an offer at the same time. In my opinion, they've already done the groundwork for Osman which hopefully he carries his AFCON form to play for Chelsea, if that's the case. Just using the Mudrick move to Chelsea as an example, Arsenal are sometimes convinced they're going to get a player, but they don't. When it's 50-50 for a player, there's also the possibility they don't get a deal over the line. Arsenal could argue that everyone thought that Declan Rice was going to Chelsea, but they got him. You put that forward, but it would be a big sell to get Ivan Tony to go to the Emirates. We'll have to wait and see whether they can do it. I mean, same old, same old. For what it's worth, where Tony's concerned, he's set to stay at Brentford until the end of the season and prioritise me making a summer move as he heads into the final year of his contract, people. Let's start closing things because it just looks a bit more pretty. A tab police, I know you're on me and I'm trying my best to be patterned and let's make sure we don't miss anything that concerns Arsenal Football Club coming out and emerging. What's all of this? Oh, I think we've got that already. Don't worry. And I, Smith Rowe is a sad tale of wasted talent. Whoever that journalist is, I want to fight you. Don't rub out my guy like that and bake them headlines. You look, all know I'm a big fan of Vlahovic. Apparently, Arsenal remain interested in signing Vlahovic as the Italian Giants attempt to get a new contract finalised. That's where I'm a bit pessimistic because they're trying to get him to sign a new contract. He's linked with other clubs. Obviously, if you've got a half-decent striker in today's day and age, that's like gold dust at this moment in time. Obviously, Arsenal have a historical interest in him, but it's not going to get done in January. It could get done in the summer, depending on the dominoes that fall where strikers are concerned, people. Um, again, we already went over for Mr. Fernandez, so you have that there. Romano on Smith Rowe has said, it's a concrete possibility to see Smith Rowe approached by clubs before the end of January. My feeling is that it's going to be complicated for him to leave because Arsenal are only open to a permanent transfer. Loan makes no sense. Also, Arteta is very happy with the player and he's happy at Arsenal. If they receive an important proposal, it could be a possibility. But otherwise, I see him staying at the club in this transfer window. I mean, unless we're going to get a central midfield body, it doesn't make sense to let Smith Rowe go. I agree that if he's going to leave, you need to leave permanent now. You're 24, two years left on your deal. It, it, it's past just new. But at the same time, if he went out on loan and he played on a regular basis, which he's not doing at this club, and he puts himself in the shop window, then you could argue there's more money for the club. Liverpool, Arsenal and Spurs have all been linked with Leroy Sane, where you see rumours that he's contracted until 2025 now. Liverpool are probably looking at a long-term replacement for Salah. Spurs are getting that Noosa guy and, and they obviously just bought Brennan Johnson. Obviously, Sane's better than both of them, but you'd imagine Spurs are targeting a striker, if anything. 
Mikel Arteta has worked with Sane. Sane is Premier League proven. You can see we obviously need a winger. You can see where these things are coming from. No doubt clubs would be attentive, but I just can't see that happening. Apparently, Xavi Simmons or Penda and Jeremy Frimpong, as well as midfielder Ezekiel Palacios, were all on the Gunners' radar. Apparently, we sent scouts to watch uh, Leipzig and not Leipzig, Leverkusen recently, people. And as you can see here, people, um, well, yeah, it was Leipzig against Leverkusen. This is why you should trust yourself, people. And it weren't just Arsenal, Liverpool, City, and United all sent scouts, which that's what professional clubs should be doing, people. Besiktas allegedly have made a first point of contact for midfielder Jorginho, and apparently their opinions on him are positive. But another one that if you're going to cut, you might as well cut at the end of the season rather than now. What's this saying? Zinchenko, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't. Is this must be AI? I don't know if that's Mikel Arteta. That's crazy. But apparently, Arsenal are still in contact with Onana's camp and Everton, but will first have to sell players before making any significant push. Boring. We've seen that before. People, what's this? Zubamendi is very close to accepting an offer to join Arsenal in the summer on a pre-agreement. Let's see what this article saying. Hmm, let's skip to the bulk of it. We all know Tony looks set to stay at Brentford until the summer. Arsenal could be closing on a deal for Real Sociedad's Martin Zubamendi, a long-term target for the Gunners. The Spaniard has been top of Arteta's wish list for some time and a switch to the Emirates could now be on the cards. According to Spanish publication AES, Zubamendi is very close to accepting an offer to join Arsenal in the summer on a pre-agreement. So we still need to either negotiate with Sociedad or find the pennies and pounds to just activate his release clause. Barcelona, who were among those rivaling Arsenal, have reportedly turned their attentions away from Zubamendi. So we have to see. Apparently, Everton are willing to sell Onana for 50 million this month, and Newcastle as well as Arsenal, as well as Newcastle as well as Arsenal, have both been linked with him. Sean Dice has said we're in a position to do the best we can with the team we have got, but we are in a position where if the right deal came along, and then he said, but you see now, quiet is in January, and we're certainly not thinking of players going out of the building once again. Smith Rowe saw a potential loan move to West Ham, shut out the park, so that's a myth. Uh, Arthur Vermeer and apparently is drawing interest from Atletico Madrid people. Several clubs are keen on him. I only mention him and keeping an eye on what's going on because he was linked with us. We've gone over the Zuba Mendy thing. I mean, very close, all of this. Until I see people holding shirts, uh, I ain't got much time for that, if I'm honest. Uh, Kirio's agent has said, Kirio is an Arsenal player. There are no signals that the club want to get rid of him. And I don't think anything will happen in the winter transfer window, especially as an attacker doesn't arrive. In the summer, it could be different because I would hardly say, I think today is actually his anniversary of signing for Arsenal. Despite the fact that he's hardly, you know, obviously it's very different. You know, Zinchenko's a key player. Timber probably pushes you down the further, further down the pecking line. Tommy Asu as well. Saliba and Gabriel are two of the best centre-halves in world football. One of the best partnerships. You're not getting ahead of that. But then I feel with Kirio, you don't really look like a reliable guy that can kind of step in when you get opportunities. But despite that, being linked is a completely different thing. But he's still drawing interest, allegedly, from Napoli, AC, Inter and a bunch of Italian clubs. Can we just get our 20 million euros back and just bite the bullet? George Mendes apparently has been speaking about Pedro Neto people. Obviously, he's going to talk up his clients, but let's see what he's saying. This industry is a world of contacts, knowledge and trust, but nobody gives anything to anybody. I sold Alv Ivan Carvalho for 15 million euros to Monaco, but then Wolverhampton paid the same amount and then Fulham paid more. The same with Helder Costa. They were two fundamental and decisive players in Wolves' rises to the top, worth much more than they cost. And there were offers for both of them well above their cost. Bernardo Silva and Jao Cancelo have reached the top. It fills me with pride and that's what drives me. So lock in with Edu. The next Bernardo, Cancelo, all these Portuguese sick guys, get them at the Emirates, man. We've got Brazilians, you speak Portuguese, it's lit. He's then talked up Pedro Neto. He said, Pedro Neto had played five minutes at Braga and left for Lazio because the president trusted what we told him. In the meantime, he got back what he paid. At the time, Pedro Neto was about to go to Benfica, but he, he then went to Wolverhampton and he wasn't sold and he wasn't sold for more than 100 million euros because he got injured. It's my life and, what's, and what fulfills me and what I'll continue to do. Okay. Get him to go to Arsenal. We ain't got 100 million, but we can make it work. Sasha Boy has been linked with Sheffield United. Arsenal and Manchester United have been linked with the 23-year-old French fullback who obviously plays for Galatasaray. I mean, if there was a loan with an option to get things done, potentially. But yeah, 
his name is still floating. It's been a bit of a dry January, literally. Camavinga hype. I mean, great player, but nobody's going to get quite sold on, on those rumours to Arsenal or Liverpool. We've gone over you already. What's this? Uh, apparently, Tottenham have thrown their hat into the ring where Braithwaite is concerned. I mean, it's easy to link Everton players with a move away. Had Dominic Calvert-Lewin's form been half decent, he'd probably be linked with Arsenal, Spurs and Chelsea. Obviously, Braithwaite's quite good at 21 years of age and the poster boy for Everton potential outgoings is obviously on Nana, which we've gone over. Tottenham have allegedly thrown their hat into the ring, people. His impressive form has seen him linked with Man United and Arsenal. According to the Mail, Spurs are throwing their hat into the ring, people. But you'd imagine Braithwaite is going to be sold for something ridiculous. And whatever they spent on him from Carlisle in 2019, English tax, he's going to make a lot. He's going to cost a lot. I like him a lot, though. I think he's a very decent player and could be a good option. Apparently, you know, Cheeto Obi, our, our Danish youth international, is drawing interest from Borussia Dortmund, which is to be, you know, it doesn't surprise me at all that they want to see where, you know, where they can get players of tomorrow and whatnot. Um, obviously, he can't sign a pro deal until he's 17. He's 15. So you can indirectly agree a pro for when he turns 17. But the, 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 the first put, sort of professional contract would be when he turns 16. Is he a school leaver? He must be in year 11. He's obviously signing scholarship terms. I do think a lot. I think people need to let the man develop. I think he's got I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he needs to improve his hold-up play. I think he's got a lot to improve. But when you look at some of these ITKs and youth experts, they're saying he's the next awesome and all these things and just chatting shit, pardon my language, really. Let the man develop because these people that gas him, they're going to be the first to turn their backs on him, really and truly. The message coming from Arsenal's camp about Thomas in Thomas Partey's injury now. Boy, you know, we haven't seen him since early October. He's... You wouldn't even describe Thomas Partey as a bit part player this season for Arsenal, would you, really and truly? Just on the midfield, you're talking about Jorginho and Rice. I think that Thomas Partey might be making an appearance sometime soon. He has gone, for, he has been gone for a lot of this season, but there's a certain degree of optimism within the camp that he'll be ready. And the idea of putting him in midfield with Rice for the foreseeable future would be interesting, assuming he's fit for the foreseeable future. And such is life. When some players come back from injury, others start getting injured. If you haven't liked, comment or, just, or subscribe. What are you lot doing, people? Omar Rekic has returned to Arsenal, the 22-year-old people, after his loan at Wigan. He was a, he made 14 appearances. He helped contribute to six clean sheets. You'd imagine he goes on loan again, people. So that seems to be what's concerning our football club at this moment in time, which is quite dry, really and truly. As I said, I thought we'd at least make a little loan sign. And most exciting thing is, allegedly, you know, we're going to sign Mr. Zubamendi. But until people are holding shirts, I'm not involved. Our Teta scouts, oh, we've already seen that. Where else we got? Where's that thing I just clicked here? What's this? Oh, well, Man United are willing to do battle to get Zuba Mendy as well. Zuba Mendy's been linked with Aston Villa, Arsenal, Manchester United, Bayern Munich, if I haven't said that, Athletic Bilbao, and actually Newcastle people. So, well, we'll have to see, really. I mean, all the, the, the noise out of our club is all about, oh, we're, we're doing this in the summer, we're doing that in the summer, I hear it. But, you know, we need to do things now, man. Party's a myth. Tony is the guy just paid a P's bun FFP. And to be fair, like, a little fine, that's it. I, I'm, a, I'm in two worlds about Ivan Tony because would he be my first choice? Probably not. But I, I think, you know, the fact that any platform he is on, he says basically, yo, I'm, I'm trying to cut, you know, I'm trying to join a top club respectfully to Brentford. He's got 18 months left on his deal, which would be 12 in the summer. You know, Premier League proven. I love his mentality. I think he's got that healthy nastiness. I think he's got a lot of aspects to his game. But, and I would understand if people say, you know what, forget the summer, the Osman, Blavich, all these things. If Arsenal have a chance to salvage our season and win some top honours, you might as well get a deal done for Ivan Tony right now. But at the same time, you know, you do, I know he's come back in the right possible way, scored a free kick, but you do want to assess the market for other targets and you do want to see just how he re-begins his life in the Prem. I, I think we should be, Tony should be on the list. That agent sounds like he's dropping hints to give assurances for a team to take a punt on Neto given all his injuries. I mean, Neto's a bad boy. Like, it's, unfortunately, it's the injuries which, you know, I think if we go all... I know it's difficult, but if we go all the way back to August, he was probably one of the players in the Premier League of the season and then he got the big injury. Zuba Mendy and Simmons in the summer. Uh, 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 James, I would love it, but big, big peas. You know, I don't understand if PSG don't give Xavi Simmons a chance to cut his teeth in the in in the in the team, and they've got an appreciating asset. Like you can't rule out him going out on loan again, and he needs to probably make money. Zuba Mendy will flop in the Prem. Mark my worst screenshot. This big up DG that kid Lamine Yamal is pure God given talent. Have you seen? But he's lit, man. He's lit, and some 16, 17 year old made their debut for Barcelona recently. The next Edu barbecue, give Mendes extra meat. 
pause. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know about that, but yeah. Eddie will get the wrong Mendes client. I mean, is Fabio Vieira not one of his? I would give Tommy Asu a further year, but if he's injured early in the, in the season, then I would look to offload him in January 2025. The goalkeeper situation is a mess. I would have Ramsdale back in goal. I hear you, but it looks like Ramsdale's days, unfortunately, are numbered. For me personally, I, I would keep Tommy Asu. I think Tommy Asu is a valued squad player, and I think he's kind of showed it. But again, if players continue with injuries, then they need to cut really and truly. But Tommy Asu is... I, He'd be a key player for my team moving forward, man. Afcon is the funny. Listen, Afcon is the funniest tournament for like the scenes when people lose, lose, seeing fans cry, did the, the catalogue of goals, the calamitous goalkeeping, and I just think Afcon goes against all logic. Like more time, if you're Mo Salah, if you're Osimhen, if you're one of those household names in Europe, you look so meaty playing against guys that are probably part-time security guards or something. Afcon goes against all football in logic, and it's fantastic tournament, man. Sane is a speed merchant. His finishing is poor for the amount of times he's been on a goal. He'd be a, he'd be good with a good forward to finish off the build-up. I hear that, but, you know, that could be applied to half of our team. I just don't buy the Sane things. And for me, Sane seems like a bit of a diva. I don't know him to be saying that, but it seems like everywhere he goes, like there's all, not, not that you're a bad player or something, but it's like you're always not seeing eye-to-eye -eye with the manager or you're in your feelings about something. So I'm not sure, but... I like Sane, man, and I think a couple of years ago when we was playing in the yellow away kit, I remember when Sane joined Man City, he had a bit of a tough period, and I think we played them away from home, and he had a great game then, and then he just went off, so I think Arsenal kind of kicked off his Premier League career, if I'm honest. I think send them, you know I can't say that, I'm going to say sentiment, Graham, you know I can't say that word. It has to stop at the club. Cedric, Kirill, El Nene, Jorginho, Partey, Smithrow, Nelson need to be sold, raise funds for incomings, and help raise the squad together. I mean, Graham, obviously, I'm the wrong person to ask about Smith Rowe. I'm keeping him. Partey, so it's a weird one because I think, you know, considering the new contracts and the money we spent, his age and probably not trying to give him a new deal, we're open to offers. Um, but I think there's reality. Still need to bring in a two couple midfielders, but keeping Partey part of the mix. Nelson probably needs to cut if you're not going to play significantly. Jorginho, I'm not saying you need to go, but unless you're on the peripheral things and you're a voice in the dressing room and you're playing on occasion, probably need to leave. El Nene needs to go tomorrow. Kirio has not worked out. I, I, you know, Arsenal need to take responsibility for Cedric because it was a stopgap signing that did not work out. You put meaty players on big wages. It's a myth. No clue when Timber's back, man. Trent will be back before Arsenal game and Robertson back for the game tomorrow. Music to my ears feels good when your key players return from injury. Just like Arsene Wenger used to say, it's like a new signing, man. Hey, whoever is on Twitch, I'm not going to say that comment. Block that person, though. That's, that's some weird ones there, man. That's some crazy comments, spooky comments, man. I, I don't know about any of that. That's crazy. But, yeah, man, it is what it is in that regard, folks. <laughs> have faith no 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 george george we need to we need to go back to school for that but i appreciate i appreciate you gassing me i think it's too soon for kirio but fans get a bit rabbit do you know what as i said before i like kirio i don't know why but there's something i like about you but at the same time i i don't think you know you should just get rid of any player who struggles but we're trying to move one way and i don't know kirio but you still you seem a bit overruled like it's not that it's like you don't believe in yourself. It's like you're still a bit in awe of Arsenal. You're still feeling like a big, like a small fish in a big pond sort of thing. You got to remember, like, you might be playing with Saka, Odegaard, Declan Rice, this guy, that guy. You're here for a reason. Polish international playing in Serie A and on the football field. Brother, brother, I ain't seen it, man. Like, people were used to waffle about his recovery pace. If you have 0% awareness and you're caught flat-footed, that's a myth. I must admit, like... Obviously, when man here Polish defender, I thought you know you're 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 a crazy one, isn't it? Like you're obviously Vidic Serbian, but you're one of them. Like you, you you'd rather get kicked in your face than concede a goal. So when I'm seeing man play around with their boots against Brighton, duck out of headers against Sport in Lisbon, get absolutely fried and diced against PSV, rightly so hooked against Fulham. And, and again, you were in Italy, which is the university of defending. Like you should be a mad bastard. And I'm not seeing none of that. So if he's not cutting the mustard, if he's not looking comfortable at left back or right back, if he's not, even if he's getting little minutes, if he's not looking convincing and he's still got interest, sometimes hold your hands up, let's keep it moving because right now, 20 million on Kirio, and I don't say every sign it has to work, but 20 million on Kirio, it ain't looking like the TIG right now. Lokonga, 2030, myth. I don't really want to throw Fabio Vieira into this, but he ain't really convincing like that. That's the next 30. 
Obviously, you could argue Kai Havertz is settled and he's playing, but 65 million on Kai Havertz. We need to maximise our resources, man. I like Kirill, man. He's just not that guy. What, like, what are we listening to? What I'm saying I've, I've literally just echoed what you're saying. I don't think he's shit, so I'm not gonna say shit. You just don't look like you're with it. Which there you have it, man. I'm on set shot in him, as I've said. I want to be proven wrong with everything. You know, I want to wake up and Kirill looks def great defensively. Zinchenko learns how to defend. Jesus can back goals. Nelson does something, man. I want to be wrong because it helps our team, but it's a myth, man. Partey or Jorginho kind of need to keep one. I think they might just say, you know what, Jorginho's on less wages. He's a bit of a kind of coach at the team. They might say, you know what, Jorginho, stay for one more year. But Jorginho might do the, the Xhaka thing and say, you know what, Gaffa, I want to go back to Italy before my career's done. I want to go back to Brazil. It is what it is. Pardon me. I don't understand why we're going so hard for Zuba when we could go for Fifana at Monaco and get a lower fee if FFP is a concern. I mean, if it's likely to happen in the summer, you'd imagine that money would be injected into the football club by KSC. By God's grace, we qualify for the Champions League and there'll probably be some outgoings. Can't bring certain men to the trenches, you're right. If Gabriel gets injured and Kirill has to play a run of games, you man off the needle. The only time I've been convinced with Kirill, and even now on the topic of Liverpool, he, did, he weren't bad when he... In fact, he weren't that bad in against Liverpool in the FA Cup. But is is the first season, last year, he came off of the subs bench and he absolutely took someone out by mistake. We are in problems, really and truly. But I do think the most... The, the brightest time I've seen Kirill was probably when he got a run in the team. Like, obviously, Saliba got injured. We went with Rob Holden, which in hindsight, I wonder if Mikel Arteta is sitting there and thinking, oh, you know what? Should I have played Kirill before? But he might not have been ready. Now nah, I can't lie, your boy, and Kirill is way better than Rob Holden. Shout out to Rob Holden for the FA Cup. But yeah, what's the lowest fee the club should accept for Pi if it comes to it? Really and truly, like, she'd be lucky to probably get about 10, 15 million because obviously Partey's quality isn't in question, but he's on the wrong side of 30, inconsistent with injuries, and he's on big wages. And whatever team he goes to, he might not get Arsenal wages, but he's going to have to get something handsome there. I don't know if Partey wants pastures new, you know, the Saudi thing. I don't know if that will come back. But logically, if you want to sign Thomas Partey, if we fast forward to the summer, if you want to sign Thomas Partey, you might give Arsenal, you might give Arsenal a transfer fee, but you might say, you know what, it's August, couple of months in January, we can agree a deal with him to join us next season, or we can just wait for him to run down his deal. Thomas Partey might be on that himself. Who knows, man? Really and truly. Holding is holding in Crystal. I mean, has he even played for Crystal Palace? Has anyone seen Rob Holding like since he left Arsenal Football Club? Seriously. But yeah, I think Arsenal will take any fee they can get for Partey. And they'll look at it and say, you know what? We've got big wages off the wage bill, if I'm honest with you. Kirio isn't pulling up any trees, but he's being played out of position like Tierney. Uh, I somewhat disagree. I hear it, but at the same time, like... Whether you're a centre back or a full or a centre back playing full back, there should be certain things in your game. Like you should still be relatively switched on defensively. And I haven't seen that with Kirio really and truly. And Kirio looks, in my opinion, like one of every player is a confidence player, but he just looks like or portrays to me, looking at him ignorantly on the TV. You look like one of them players that needs an arm around you all the time and stuff like that. And we ain't got time for that, really and truly. If you don't believe in yourself, the gaffer and no one else can believe in you, you know, really. Because I've seen Kirio play inverted in preseason, looked all right. Now he looks kind of crap. He's trying, I think, Arteta against Luton or one of them teams there played him as a traditional fullback. It didn't work. He just he, like, he just looks like it just looks like he could be got at man. PSV, he got stressed the hell out as well. <laughs> Holding did his thing. I heard Palace want to con terminate his contract. Boy, hey, Palace zanged themselves getting him. Be lucky to get 10 15. Zinchenko can't defend. He can go when Timber comes back. Kirill is in it. Now nah, I'm keeping Zinchenko as part of the squad. Eddie can't score. Havertz is just Havertz. Sambi isn't good. And Cedric is straight ish. Get rid of them. Hella guys. And the think about it logically, like, I don't care what a man's getting paid. It's not me. But, and I don't know exactly what they're getting paid. But logically, you hear Cedric is on 100 bags or something close to that. You hear that with Nelson. You hear that with Enketia. Now I'm not trying to lead a crusade against them lot. But are we maximizing our resources in that regards? That's 300 grand a week. That could, you know, especially when we're trading close to FFP. I'm not too sure. Then you've got Thomas Partey and Jorginho who could probably be shifted on. Then you've brought in Kai Havertz for 65 million. And again, I know not every signing can work. Mistakes happen, but we need to be getting a bit more bang for our buck. Is Sambi even playing at Luton? I think he started the other day and he has had some injuries to, to his degree, but 
just at this point, just try and get our money, just try and get our money back in it, really and truly. There's not much more you could say about that. Let's try and get our cash back. There's nothing else. Let's see. Let's actually see. To be fair, Cedric's contract is done at the end of the season. But at this point, I have to I have to respect Cedric because no one put a gun to his head to sign to offer him a new deal. Offer him a deal in the first place. And you know, him, Marie, William, them stopgap signings didn't work. And at the end of the day, like Lukonga is 25 this this year. He's 24 now. Don't really know what's going on, really and truly. Let's see his statistics. He's played seven times, well, eight times in all comps, seven times in the Premier League for Luton. He has had some injuries. He's only played 563 minutes. Lukonga's played 39 times for Arsenal Football Club and 41 times in the Premier League. To be fair with you, though, you know, we got 80 minutes in their victory against, uh, he got 18 minutes better yet against Man City in their 2 1 defeat. He got uh, in their 1 0 victory over Newcastle, we played 80 minutes. He then got two 90 minutes um, in, in, in a row against Sheffield United and Chelsea, and he got 86 minutes against Burnley. So just stay fit and do your thing. And there you have it, really. Cedric will still be at the club when we move to our next stadium, probably. Would love the Monday, really. But again, these lot cost big, big money, big money. And if you ain't talking figures, then you're not going to get these players. And I just hope that we get at least one defensive, one defensive recruitment. I, I, if I had to predict, which I've got no evidence to go off this, but you'd imagine a loan signing. And that's about it, man. Kirill don't have big Gabby strengths, but he's a better ball playing centre back that I think would suit Arteta's system. I'm sorry, Els, you're smoking. There's no way on God's green earth that Kirill is has a better ball playing capacity than Gabriel. That's I think people because Gabriel's not sexy and he don't maneuver like Saliba. I don't think Gabriel gets in. I think he's one of our most underappreciated players. I think he's one of the most underrated in the in the in the league. And no, nah, I'm sorry, there's not a damn thing Kirill Kirill can do better than Gabriel. Maybe wiping these holes, but um, I don't know. Cedric will take over as manager after Arteta. I swear Cedric was doing his coaching badges. I rate Cedric because a few months ago. You was playing for under 21s. You played in the Champions League. You have been here longer during this rebuild, getting us back into the promised land where, you know, Ramsdale's about to get rubbed out. Abamian and Lacazette got binned. Ainsley maitland now has got binned. Tierney got binned. You know, probably a couple of other Pepe got binned. And Cedric is still here standing. Madness. Would you sell Ramsdale to a domestic rival and what would be a good free for him? I mean, if you could get 35 to 50 million and all depends what you mean as a rival. You know, if Chelsea got the bread, I wouldn't want to. But, you know, if they're willing to offer, yeah. If I'm him, though, Chelsea's a big club. They'll get their project back going. You stay in London. It's a competitive team and all of that jazz. But at some point, assuming he signed for them today or he signed in the summer, they would have Sanchez, Kepa, whether you rate him or not, and he'll probably be gone. And Ramsdale, who is the number one? It's even more of a muddy waters in their goalkeeping situation if he went there than what we've got. If you go Newcastle, I'm sure Newcastle, if the conditions were right, would take you on loan today with Nick Pope's injury. But you've got Nick Pope and and and, and yourself, so that would be a bit of a myth. I think the Wolves one is very interesting. I think he needs to do the Emmy Martinez thing, go to one of them clubs there respectfully to Villa because look at their project now and you will get your move really, if I'm honest. Nah, man, nah, man. I hear you, but nah. I, I, I listen. I watch every game twice. I'm sorry. There's no way Kirill has it. Kirill's not better at carrying that ball. He's not better at punching the lines. He doesn't keep the ball. He doesn't retain the ball well enough. His IQ isn't good enough in that regards. I'm sorry. There's not. There's no way on earth that Kirill is better on the ball at anything. More composed though. Kirill is more composed than Big Gabriel. I thought I was deluded. Now I've always wanted to say that. Do you know how many times I see that in the comments? You're moving, but I respect your opinion. But now, nah, man, come on, bro, come on, bro, come on, bro. Kirill can't talk to him. When you look at all our defenders, like Saliba, sexiest passes. Him and Gabriel, big Gabriel levels. Zinchenko, that's his bread and butter, if anything, in that regards. Who else is there? Tomiyasu, conservative with the ball. Kirill's probably more likely to to try the mad pass, but. Tomiyasu is probably more safer. Timber is better than him at that. I can't lie to you. Benjamin White, mm, you're a bit organic, but I, I I think you're better. At it. In fact, yeah, no, you fuck it, you are. No, man. And he bust case for that bozo gene, really and truly. I'm sorry, Kirio is not Kirio is not better than him at passing the ball, man. That's a myth. That's an absolute myth. Who's worse, holding Cedric Marie Nuno? They're all binge juice, really and truly. Uh, big up Cedric. I mean, not Cedric holding because you stood up tall in the FA Cup. So I don't want to jar you. 
say, oh shit, I, um, mm, Pablo, Mar not Tavares, the worst, Marie's the other worst. Because Marie, I'll never forgive you when Lukaku's trying to score, you're playing with your hair. Some of you Arsenal fans try to say Pablo Marie is the best defender at the club. I'll never forget that. Nuno Tavares, trash. Marie, trash. Cedric, also trash. Holding probably the best of the lot, really. At least I've seen Holding put in a bit of runs here. Trash versus garbage, man. In them regards. Kiri or is Vermaelen without the aggression, maybe? Kanata, he does have the balls. I like Kanata, though, man. Nuno holding Marie Cedric. What a back four. Imagine if that's your back four. Your serious relegation, you know, serious relegation. Nuno better than Tini. I hear it. Maybe at kissing dogs, allegedly. But yeah. Ainsley really should have worked out, but clearly didn't have the mentality. Ainsley, I don't know what was wrong with Ainsley, man. He just doing the Badina thing, man. Just every minute talking on Instagram and things. And I know I'm I'm paraphrasing and the context is a very different, but you know, at this moment in time, with the, cli the climate of our club, sorry, I would not mind having Ainsley Maitland now in the squad, if I'm completely honest, at fullback in some capacity. But shout out to you at Leon doing what you need to do. Unpopular opinion, I think Havarts will be quality for us. Just it will take time like Grealish did. I hear it, but Grealish is actually a baller, though. I hear It has to work out for Havarts. DG never looks at Twitch, so what am I doing here, mate? Allow me, man. Allow me, allow me. Shout out the Twitch gangs, the Twitch Stonians. Like I don't spend time with you. Like we weren't playing football manager yesterday. Don't do that. Without the aggression or conviction, tiny bit similar. Kirill's meanie, man. Don't get me wrong. I think Big Gabby question marks. Everyone does, but I'm starting to have a different appreciation for him. But he could do better with a boy at his feet when under pressure. I don't think you've been. I hear it, but he ain't been watching it recently. And I hear what you're saying, but you can't. Listen, no one's right, no one's wrong, but for me, you can't be saying all of this and then talk up Kirio. Kirio is me to you, man. Like, I, and I like Kirio. I don't know why I like you. There's something I like about you. I don't want to turn my back on you, but in the summer, if we can get our money back and we can bring in some other lit dons, then safe, man. But I would say for Kirio, the main thing looks confidence. You don't look like the pennies dropped. Like, okay, I might have been playing with these lot 12 months ago on FIFA, but I'm here for a reason as well. Now, I'm a 20 odd million pound centre half Polish international. I'm here to do my thing. And how many Polish players have there been in Arsenal's history? You, you could be shameless and say Podolski, even though he represented Germany. You've got Szczesny. You've got Fabianski. He's got to sit there and say, yo, I want to put my little legacy for the Polish ones at Arsenal. And do that really and truly. And for me, again, you come from Italy, man. You've come from Italy, man. It's like signing Brazilians and there's no skills. You've come from Italy. That's the university of the dark arts of the defensive game of the reading of the like of of worshiping the defensive aspects of football. I don't really see none of that. <laughs> hey, loud vehicle, man. <laughs> Ainsley missed the trick. Arteta should have sold him. Do you know what it is with what I would say with Ainsley Maitland Niles in hindsight? And you're right. In hindsight, what we should have done with Ainsley Maitland Niles. I'm sure we got offers from Wolves and Everton. We should have just sold him, man. Immediately, we should have just let him go, man. Come on, John, don't do that, man. Kirill sold some dreams with how he was playing in pre-season. To be fair to him, never got a consistent run except at the end of last season. And that is true. It is difficult, you know. I do think some players, when they get a run, then they'll do his thing. But it's, it's kind of harsh. Like, are you going to get a run when you've got Saliba and Gabriel ahead of you and Zinchenko and he's key to the system? So when you get your chance, take it. Give the manager no reason not to drop you. You know, whether we rate Eddie and Ketia or not, which, again, I know some of you are going to start posting and things. It's very difficult when you're playing two minutes, 10 minutes, etc. But there was a point he was taking them opportunities and he got an extended run in the team and he did OK. Really. So, yeah, man, it just it just didn't it's just not working out, really. And there's nothing wrong with it not working out. We've made bad signings. We'll make bad signings again. Everyone will make bad signings. Even Pep, he doesn't have man, many of them. But, you know, Doku, if he was at Arsenal or Liverpool or somewhere else right now, there'd be some, I think you'll get it right, there'd be some question marks. It took Greenish a while. And I don't think anybody cares, but Calvin Phillips has been absolute garbage for City. We all knew he wasn't going to be a key player like that, but he's been absolute binges. And they're trying their best to flog him. Kirill never meant to be a star, always a good backup for a reasonable fee. Let's see him get a run before we determine he's not good enough. Who else did the club bring in to back up Gabby for 20-odd million? I mean, to be fair, with what I've seen with Kirill, the, the, the bars on the floor, I like him a lot. 
I don't know if he's if if he's a good backup. And if you're never meant to be a starter, that's what I'm saying. If you're not going to be a starter, just make sure you look competent and reliable. Like Tommy Asu, arguably Tommy Asu might not be a starter in Arsenal's team, but when sorry, but when he comes in, he's reliable. Kirill's been savage more often than not. Laka not scoring forced Eddie into the team. Not saying I rate him, but he turned up at least. Arteta loves the potential players. Fab, Kirio, Tavares at the time. To be fair, I think Arteta knew that Tavares was Buki because he said that was a club signing. So whoever decided, it must have been the same guy who suggested Runnison. And you could just tell, you know, you, you can't write off players before they kick a ball. And I would love for Tavares to look like a half-decent fullback because we look all right. But at the same time, like, you can just tell when someone's going to be shit. Like, I know the modern day fullbacks, you have to go forward and all of this. But again, we if you care enough, go back on my YouTube channel to when we actually signed Nuno Tavares. We did a live stream and we read what the man himself said on Arsenal.com. Now, if I hear a defender, yeah, you could talk or a fullback, talk about going forward. But I want to hear about I love to man mark. I love to, you know, I like to, I don't like my opponent to get past me. I like to be strong 1v1. He's talking about shooting with his right foot. I don't know about anyone else. Alarm bells. Alarm bells. If Torres had put that attacking power and potential in defensive actions and managed to improve that way, would have been a Mazzolino. I hear that. Tavares said he likes goals. Big up to him for scoring against United, but he's key man. And I'll never forget against Chelsea, where we, we, we counted attack. There was like two options on the right, one on the left, and he's just gone for the shot. He's Tavares is crap, man. Let's be it's, it's all right. And I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong about everyone that I don't rate. I don't rate Cedric. I'd love to wake up tomorrow and you look like a decent fullback, so we wouldn't have to buy anyone. But it's not how the world works. Absolutely meaty. And it's okay to say certain amount of crap. Someone said the other day to me, Jesus is just a skillful lacquer with Lesko. I mean, I like Gabriel Jesus, and I don't want to disrespect him, but I said it last year. I mean, he's a breath of fresh air, he's a lovely footballer, but Really and truly playing devil's advocate. It's the lack of thing right now. You passion, work hard. Obviously, you're a yard faster, but the goals, bro. The goals, man. And again, we knew what time it was, man. Tavares is... He needs to get therapy or get section, man, because that video why he's trending, I, I don't know what Tavares is on. Like, scary, it's very, very scary behaviour, man. Very scary behaviour. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, when you've seen the video that Saliba was in years ago, the Tavares thing... Mikel Arteta would salt bay. Maybe there's something in the water at our club, but I didn't see any. You need therapy, man. Anyone that's absolutely snogging the dog's face off like he's like he's shameless on the dance floor and just trying to just got go home back to a hotel. He should, Tavares has got he gotta be a madman. Like gotta be a madman. But I don't know. This is just what someone said in the comments. I haven't seen anything about Tavares, so I can't verify anything. Tavares, Roberto Carlos. Shh, I wish. I wish. In another life. And the thing is, even some people used to say Tavares should be a winger. And I hear it because he can't defend. I hear the logic. But at the same time, your decision making is going to be highlighted even more as a winger. Because now you're actually going to need to be decisive in the final third. You know, I do think people overrated Tavares in the final third. There's no point galloping forward if you're not going to pass when you need to pass. Shoot when you need to shoot. Liability defensively. It's crazy. Jesus seems like a different player in the Champions League. Maybe the lack of low blocks, but it's crazy how much better he looks there. I hear that. And, hey, you're right. And to be fair, into Champions League, obviously, he's taken a break. But for a while, we looked a bit crap in the final third in the Prem. And then we were saving our best for the champs. And it's like you said there, maybe it's a cultural thing. People are not necessary. And, and obviously, to be fair, at this moment in time, it's cost everybody in the Champions League in the group stages because part of the scored scored hella goals and battered teams and whatnot. But... Maybe it's a cultural thing and it's gone against them, but I think that's a big reason, really. But we have to find a way to play against them, really and truly. I don't think everyone's going to have a low block or anything against any team, but logically, and I'm not saying you, but it feels like Arsenal fans are shocked that oppositions are trying to find a way to stifle our attackers. Why on God's green earth, generally, would you want Saka and Martinelli and Jesus with hella space and doing what they're doing? I'm not sure. At least Tavares is playing more under Nuno Espirito, so hopefully we can get a good fee for him. If Tavares can make it as a footballer, don't ever give up on your dreams because that <laughs> to be fair, football's a funny old game of opinions, man. As for me, anyways, I said it then. You could look at as a failed winger myself. No, but none of us wanted to be fullbacks. Obviously, there's a certain fullback that's a legend at, at Barcelona. We don't condone what he's fighting on trial, so we won't say his name. But the reporter Carlos is the Marcelos. These kind of guys, they're making full trend, they're making fullbacks be sexy again. But none of us wanted to be fullbacks. I said it in the summer. You could look at Nuno Tavares and see 
probably was on the academy circuit. You got to about 15, 16. They said, you know what? You're not really going to have a career as a winger. You can become a fullback. And he ran with that, really and truly. Good athletic ability to get up and down, but this is the best thing you can have as a footballer. And obviously, if Tavares is playing with us, so you're going to look like a baller, but you ain't got this upstairs. Jenkinson industry plant man like the, gone from Charlton to playing week in week out I used to hate Jenkinson at the club like him as a person big him up for being an Arsenal fan but Arsenal fans some are weird man you have these high expectations and then you love some crap players and then when you say oh he's an Arsenal fan living the dream so what blood it's a nightmare me seeing him the hell man sorry people PTSD I've seen a lot of Jenkinson mistakes K Kirill, Eddie, Reese, Nuno, Lokonga, Cedric, El Nene, Jorginho should all be out the club at the end of the season. In an ideal world, but I don't see them all going. I think the homegrown boys, I don't think, you know, Smithro, Eddie, Nelson, Ramsdale, they could all depart. I think El Nene needs to cut. I think Cedric needs to cut. I mean, Lokonga needs to cut, but are we going to, is, is they going to, are they going to be forthcoming with offers for him? And I think he might even be contracted until 2025. So we might have to force a revival in the squad for him, really and truly. Reese. Like you're 24 now, you need to go somewhere you're genuinely going to get a start and then maybe 10, 15 and whatnot and just make some inroads. But I like Nelson. It's just a weird though, bro. Nuno started as a winger, is converted to a left back. There, there, there you have it, really and truly. There you have it. I learned from the best, man. I didn't see it where to then go. So, yeah, man. Again, people though. But with that being said, I'm going to go and grab lunch and I'm going to let you lot go because we've gone over the news, we've, we've had a great chat, I appreciate you lot, whether you're on Twitch, that one's for John, YouTube or, or Twitter, again, make sure you're smashing the like button, make sure you're turning on your notification bells, big up my guy Rakeem, because we had an Arsenal fan show, we recorded it yesterday, it should be out at 3pm, so out in a couple hours, any Arsenal rumours, talking points, etc, rest assured I'll get vids out man, and I hope you lot have had a great weekend, great start to your Mondays and Tuesdays, hope you and your loved ones are in great health, make sure you're subscribing, roll to 70k and things like that, but yeah, man. Bless and I'll see you lot again soon. Oh, yeah. I've been given, like...